thought for the day, brothers and sisters. Today I was reading the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18. In verses 1 to 5, we basically see there the disciples talking to Jesus as to who would be the greatest in the kingdom of God. I remember growing up as a young boy, young man, as a boxing fan, and in the 1970s, there was a fighter by the name of Muhammad Ali, and he would call himself the greatest. He thought he was the greatest fighter in the world, and he probably was, but he was a very proud person. And yet later on in his life, sadly, very sadly, he died of a Parkinson's disease where he couldn't even speak anymore, couldn't even clean himself, he couldn't even feed himself. It was very, very sad to see what happened to him. A little later on, a few years later, there was another fighter, a very young fighter from New York City named Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson called himself, self-proclaimed himself as the baddest man in the world, that nobody could beat him. In February of 1990, he flew to Tokyo, Japan to fight a man by the name of James Buster Douglas, a 50 to one underdog. Odds of, the, odds of those numbers basically mean it's off the chart. What that means is that really nobody was betting on James Douglas to beat Mike Tyson. But history shows that Buster Douglas knocked out Mike Tyson in the 10th round. Three times in the Bible, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 34, James chapter 4, verse 6, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5, God tells us that in his word, he gives grace to the humble, but he opposes the proud. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18 tells us that pride goes before a fall and a haughty spirit goes before destruction. There was a king in the book of Daniel named Nebuchadnezzar. You can read this story in the book of Daniel, especially in like the first four or five chapters. This man said that I am the best man in the world. I built these t kingdoms. I built these temples. I built all these cities. I, I, I. As his life went on, God humbled this man to the point where he was being, he was acting like an animal out in the field, feeding off the grass. He was so humbled, but yet he proclaimed that God, the God of heaven, was the true God. My brothers and sisters, as Jesus was going through this with his disciples as to who would be the greatest in the kingdom of God, Christ told us in Matthew chapter 18, verse 3, that we must enter the kingdom of God as a little child. Now, I must point out that the Bible is very clear that little children are not innocent. Psalm 51, verse 5, and Psalm 58, verse 3, I would encourage you to read that, basically says that children are born, we're all born in sin, we're all conceived in sin. But what Jesus was saying is when we come to the kingdom of God, we have to come to God, we have to come to Christ for salvation like a little child. That means we come humbly. A little child, I can remember when my kids were very little, they didn't worry about social status. They didn't worry about what they were gonna eat or drink. They weren't very boastful or proud. They were very, very dependent on me and my wife to take care of them. So when we say, when Jesus says we come to God, we come to the kingdom of God as little children, doesn't mean that we come innocently, but it means that we come humbly. C.S. Lewis was a great Christian philosopher years ago. He was born in 1898, died in 1963. He once said that humility is not thinking of yourself, thinking less of yourself, it's thinking of yourself less. Philippians chapter two, verse three tells us, humility is thinking of the needs of others. Often in life, I think of the word joy, J-O-Y as an acronym, J meaning Jesus, O meaning others, Y yourself. If we put Jesus first, others second, and then ourselves last, we'll have true joy in our hearts. That's what it means to be humble. To be humble is also to accept praise from others, but not praising yourself. In other words, as it says in Proverbs chapter 27, Proverbs chapter 27, verse two, we don't pat ourselves on the back, but we let others praise us. Somebody gives you a compliment, even then you stay humble. I hope today's devotional video, my friends, will remind us that we enter the kingdom of God as humble sinners. Jesus gave us a parable in Luke chapter 18, verses 9 to 14, of two people that went up to the temple to pray. One prayed such like this, Lord, I thank you that I'm not a sinner like this tax collector over here. He was a Pharisee. 
I tithe, I fast, I, I dress very nice on Sunday, I know the Torah, I know the Word of God. He was a very religious person, somebody with a good reputation according to worldly standards. The tax collector, it says, didn't say nothing. He just put his head down, beat at his breast, and said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Jesus said in Luke chapter 18, verse 14, that person went home justified, for God humbles, he exalts the humbled, but he humbles those who exalt themselves. So let us stay humble in the sight of the Lord today, my brothers and sisters, and humble in the sight of our fellow man. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 2 tells us that with pride comes disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. God gives grace to the humble. God gives grace to those who humbly see their need for him as a savior. They see their own sins. Proud people, as Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 5, we are to take the bean out of our own eye before we worry about the speck in somebody else's eye. I often like to say that proud people look at the sins of others under a microscope and they look at their own sins with the lens of a telescope. What I mean by that is they see their sins from far away, that they're not that bad. But that other person, that politician, that music star, that sports star, that entertainer, that person's a real dirty, rotten sinner. The first person we need to look at and judge is the person we see in the mirror, my brothers and sisters. That is what it means to be humble. We don't look down at other people. We take the sin in our own lives, confess it to the Lord, repent, we're broken over our own sins. We have a broken and contrite heart, as Psalm 51, verse 17 tells us. Isaiah 57, verse 15, God is high and lifted up, but he's also close to those who are of a broken and contrite heart. God bless you all today, my brothers and sisters. Stay humble in the sight of the Lord Jesus Christ, remembering how much he has loved you and saved you of, of your sins. And when you think like that, you won't look down at other people. You'll try to be thinking of their needs more spiritually and physically and we'll stay humble in the sight of the Lord take care God bless you all